everyone. My name is Miriam Lazarte, and here we are for another session, another module uh, that you will be working uh, with LATAM Startups for the uh, Business uh, Strategy and Technology Program. Uh, so, uh, guys, you have worked already uh, five modules so far. Uh, this is one of the last ones. The next one is going to be about, uh, you know, how to choose a better career path, and you know some uh, inspirational story from uh, Rachel Eslatar, who was one of our uh, you know employees uh, last year, and she she is very good into advising other people into what is the career that you should have. But for this model, we are going to talk about business development in Latin, in North America, and this is uh, something that all the companies are looking for. Uh, all the companies that are coming to Canada, they always need to know about how to create that relationship with the customer, you know, how to do business development. And there are so many mistakes that happen in the market that happened to me personally, uh, happened to other people, uh, you know, that I know uh, during the years that we have been supporting startups. And, uh, you know, we have uh, over 100 startups that we have, we have supported uh, in the last, um, I will say, uh, four years. And then, uh, you know, uh, we have, lot of stories about uh, the mistakes that they have done while doing business development. But okay, uh, we are going to continue here about this uh, business development model. Uh, we are going to go some, uh, some information that you may find basic, but uh, you know, it's pretty relevant for what you are doing in North America in terms of uh, business development. And sometimes it's overlooked by the companies that are uh, coming to Canada. So let's start with this slide. It's about, uh, you know, uh, business development in North America is a lot about connections. Uh, knowing the industry, specialize, uh, uh, specialize in certain areas and knowing multitasking. That's, that's what I think that, that I'm going to go more in deep in a, in a second. And understanding the client, this is a pre-concept uh, basic uh, kind of um, a, information that you probably already know and the difference between clients and users. So uh, first of all, building your connections are pretty important. If you are in business development, if you are uh, looking to provide this special connection between the company and a potential buyer or potential partner or somebody that can help the company in any way, you have to start building your network. You have to start looking at uh, your own uh, profile, uh, especially in LinkedIn. And I go uh, through that in the next slides and make sure that you are connecting with the right people. Uh, so connections are important. Uh, connections in Canada in particular, they give you kind of like a one shot to, uh, to understand what you are doing, understand how they can help. Uh, you know, this is a common question that you are going to get. Like normally people ask you, how can I help you? If you come with, uh, mm, mm, uh, you know, the, these kind of things, then, uh, you know, people are not going to understand why you are connecting with them. Um, and why is that, uh, you know, it, it will be important for them to connect uh, with, uh, with you in particular. If you're explaining that, you know, you're helping a company and that uh, you would like to have probably a conversation, a short conversation, and again, I, I go through that in the next slides, then, uh, you know, the, the potential to connect with somebody uh, will be there. Now, uh, knowing the industry is extremely important too, because when you are talking with potential clients, or, uh, you know, people in the industry that can help somehow the company you are working with, uh, is they, they start to go into specifics. And sometimes not knowing certain uh, things about the, uh, you know, the industry, or not knowing, for example, certain regulations, or not knowing things, uh, you know, that, that should be important for a buyer, uh, you know, uh, to, to get any information, then, um, you know, you are, you are going to be in trouble when they tell you, you know, hey, I have this experience with other uh, company and we got into this problem, how you guys are facilitating this or that. Now, uh, important to know that you cannot know everything. So, uh, you know, there is no way that uh, you are going to avoid some difficult questions or questions that, uh, you know, you didn't think about before. But at least, uh, you know, knowing the basics and knowing what is the challenge of the customer uh, it will be like critical for you to connect with that, uh, that customer. 
uh, um, important to notice that, um, you know, your reputation is, is between this, like if you build a reputation in the market and people will be uh, thinking on you on how, uh, you know, you are uh, doing business and e e either you are uh, delivering what you are promising. If you are promising something that you say, for example, in two weeks or three weeks, we can deliver this project or we can do this or that, then, uh, you know, um, it will be important for you to actually keep that promise and uh, understand that, uh, you know, that the, the limitations that the company may have. Now, specialization versus multitasking. Uh, in, here I go again with the uh, comparison between uh, Latin America and Canada. In Latin America, we tend to be multitasking people. Uh, we want to do a lot of things at the same time. And then it comes to that people don't understand exactly what we do. Uh, so in this part, uh, you need to specialize. You need to make sure that people understand, uh, you know, uh, what is the particular thing that, that you do better than the others. Um, so if people don't understand that and you are kind of going to uh, different areas and I do this and I do that and the company has like a hundred services, for example, that sometimes happen to us that uh, they kind of are very horizontal type of uh, company then uh, you know we have problems uh, into uh, getting people um, understanding what is the real value of uh, uh, that you're providing to the company so just you know specialize 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 for for that part i believe that it takes sometimes uh, some time for you to understand what is going to be your specialization if you want to specialize in business development uh, if you want to focus in a certain sector then uh, you know you have to look at that uh, part and analyze if that's something uh, relevant you want to do. And even when we have this conversation with a startup, sometimes they will say, you know, I want to do uh, business development in, in no, I don't know, agricultural technology. You know how many subsectors have agricultural technology? There are too many. Uh, so you need to know exactly what is it that you are going to do that is different from. Uh, the others uh, that is different from what you uh, uh, how how you yourself you know is proposing something uh, different uh, from other business development people and how you you can be the specialist of one area. People don't like the word expert and people don't like the word consultant. Like normally, the word consultant for some reason is more like a link with a scam or somebody that doesn't know enough and you are. You are calling yourself consultant, but um, yeah, it, it's important that you use advisor. Uh, specialists maybe are more welcome than the other words. Uh, then understanding the client, either is the client uh, the company you are working with, or either is the client the uh, final client that the company expect to have as a customer. So uh, this is not. Uh, sometimes this comes difficult because in business development people. Sometimes they go with the alignment of the company, what they are expecting, what type of clients they are expecting. But it's in your place to tell the company, hey, uh, you know, the client that you are looking for is not probably the right client. I have this or this other suggestion that you may reach out easier these other type of clients, but this one. So, uh, you know, making sure that you are advising the company also in that way. And uh, listening the client is important. So I go to some slides about that, but it's important to understand why the client would like to involve with you. Uh, sometimes we have, for example, a startup that come with uh, software, um, uh, customized software for, for companies. There are literally hundreds of companies in customized software. Uh, like the price usually is not a thing. Uh, you, you will see that. Uh, in many cases, Canadians not necessarily, uh, you know, go with a company because of the price. Uh, they normally get engaged because of the person, because of the, uh, you know, the empathy with the with the company that they are getting involved with. Uh, so sometimes people say, "Well, we are, you know, cheaper than the competitors," and yeah, so that means that your product is better. Not necessarily, yeah. And uh, customized software in particular tend to be difficult because also means that, you know, people get a sense of what do you have by using it. Uh, it is untouchable, you know, you, you cannot really 
perceive the service before you are actually use it. So when you are working with companies in that area, it's pretty much difficult uh, to reach out the customers and you have to uh, you know, work a lot in the storytelling, work a lot in what other customers have perceived uh, the company values and uh, you know, uh, work in testimonials and work in, in many other facts different from price and service. Many people say we have the best service. Um, we don't know you have the best service. That, that's the reality. Uh, and, you know, until people use it. Some, sometimes people feel like uh, you are not the best in the service and that's how it is. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, there is no 100% customer satisfaction in any company. You always going, uh, will have somebody uh, complaining about something. And you always will have somebody also that will drop the price cheaper than yours uh, or the company you are working with. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, um, uh, you, you will see that uh, in many companies that are in technology, sometimes they go on to compete with, with price and that's not a way to do it. Um, the difference between client and user also is important because some companies are like, oh, you are, we are doing extremely well. We have, uh, you know, in our database, I don't know, uh, 10,000 uh, people. And, and like, are they paying you or they are just using your services? You know, there is a difference when you are paying or you're using. Uh, LinkedIn can be a good example of how you can uh, uh, think about that. You know, you probably can open up a, a free LinkedIn account. Uh, you don't have to pay to open up that. You don't have to pay to connect. You pay for premium. And then, you know, if you are not paying to open a LinkedIn account, you're an user. If you are paying for the premium or you're paying for advertisement and other services, then you're a client. That, that comes with a difference. And yes, there are many companies that actually get investment in just with database, but then you have to have, uh, you have to pass a, a sweet number uh, over 100,000 uh, probably users to uh, know more about your database because what people is investing in those cases is in the information you got you have about your customers. Uh, this is why you know ethically speaking uh, has been so conflicting uh, to be working for example with Facebook or Twitter or platforms that kind of are free for people but they are really collecting your information and they are selling that information to corporations and that's their business model. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, uh, not putting a like ethical uh, hat here, that's a business model that many companies have and um, is, is happening. So if companies want to do that, you know, they, they are allowed to do that. Uh, but of course, in most of the cases, what you are going to find is that the business model is kind of like a, a you know, mixed. Even Facebook and Twitter has it, you know, for adver or advertisement, you pay for uh, extra features that, that will help you to reach out more people. So um, uh, knowing that different also a difference uh, will help you to understand better, uh, you know, how many customers they can reach out later, how many customers can actually pay and why they will pay. Why if they have, for example, uh, free, free service access, why they will pay for something premium, for example. Um, so those analytics, those things, you have, to, you have to make sure that the customer understand the value of paying extra. Um, sometimes that comes in assumptions. People say, oh, they are going to pay because you know my features are incredibly and they can do this and that and that. And sometimes the customer doesn't know or they just don't perceive that as a value for them to be paying. So you have to go through those assumptions and make sure that actually that's a value for the customer. So in the top uh, tips for business development, uh, you have your LinkedIn profile really matters. And uh, this is one of the sections that you are going to hear me repeat myself. Uh, you know, I can speak about this two hours uh, and I'm going to share here my LinkedIn profile just to give you some tips about uh, LinkedIn and I apologize LinkedIn is not uh, working properly today uh, at least not in my computer right now and it's not showing uh, you know everything that I want to show like the picture and everything uh, but um, you know I'm going to share it anyway uh, so here you have um, 
sorry, I just want to make sure I'm sharing the right. Um, the right is, is this one actually. Um, yeah, so this is it, right? This is the uh, LinkedIn profile. One thing that you notice here, for example, if you are going to look for my LinkedIn profile is that I have my name, complete name, uh, you know, customized for the LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can do that, it's for free. Uh, many people don't do that. Many people actually have numbers or, you know, whatever LinkedIn put it at the beginning uh, for the free account and they just leave it like that. It's important that you put actually your name uh, because then, you know, the algorithm gets better to actually find people that are meaningful to connect with you. So this is, this is actually important. Um, to have a professional picture, for some reason here it's not showing my picture, but uh, you know, it's important to have a professional picture. Uh, and then sometimes I have to say, I've seen you know, people like with pictures at the beach and the parties with family members, uh, you know, and that's probably okay in Facebook, maybe in your personal Instagram, certainly not okay in LinkedIn. So you have to have a professional picture here. Um, people tend to connect more with people that have pictures than people that don't have pictures. And um, that's probably something intrinsical into people that they want to see the person that they are connecting with. Uh, and this part, for example, is important that you put at least three things that uh, will identify yourself and compare with other people. Uh, so it makes sure that, uh, you know, those, uh, those information that, that you have here is not just a genetic type of information. I've seen people that put, I'm looking for a job, where, in which industry, like, you know, uh, or I'm a student, nice, but yeah, so how, why I'm going to connect with you because you are a student, uh, you know, uh, like make sure that whatever shows in here, it shows what actually you do. And um, if people see this and they still don't want to connect, good, you know, they are saving you your time and you're saving time for them because they say, okay, I'm not interested in Latin America. I'm not interested in startups. Why should I connect with this person? Uh, you know, about yourself, you need to have at least three paragraphs. And uh, uh, it's important, especially if you are a newcomer, that you make sure uh, somebody has actually uh, look at the paragraphs and have, uh, you know, a good English written because people can be very picky. And if they see any... Uh, you know, mistakes, uh, you know, any grammar, uh, grammar mistakes, they kind of are going to see it right away. And then uh, it's not going to be good. Uh, you know, they are going to understand that probably uh, you don't have the language skills, which it could be totally wrong. Uh, you know, like I have an accent. I understand that part. Uh, you know, I don't have a perfect grammar, but I certainly are very confident in how I communicate with people. Uh, so, you know, just don't, don't give them opportunities to dismiss you because a grammar mistake. That's, that's the thing. And you will see some of my grammar mistakes in some of the presentations, by the way, that hopefully by this point I have already finished uh, correcting. So, um, you know, sometimes uh, here it shows articles that, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I'm sharing with people. Um, Lately, uh, LinkedIn has allowed companies to share articles. So I stopped sharing articles in my LinkedIn and more sharing in the company because I never published something precisely about myself or career. Um, but I, I post a lot about our community and that kind of goes into um, the, the LinkedIn articles for, uh, for the company. But it's important, you know, they know what, what you are doing and that sometimes people want to read, but I, uh, you know, it is, my experience is that people usually overlook this. Um, they overlooked also uh, kind of the, uh, you know, activity information that you share sometimes because they share just this one, perhaps uh, if they feel identified, they can click, um, but that's, that's important. Now, for this part, for example, uh, you have to elaborate a little bit more. And I believe once people connect uh, with me, I, it kind of goes into a, a, a description of actually what I do as a CEO. This is not just I'm a CEO co-founder of Latam Startups. It's what I've done for the company that as a CEO has made a difference for the company. 
So if I show you the, uh, uh, you know, my actual profile uh, from, uh, you know, my account, you probably are going to see that. But I think this is the version for people that haven't connected just yet. And um, then, uh, you know, some other things that I've done uh, here, you know, like uh, different type of jobs that, that I have in the past. Um, for some people, people like, uh, you know, sometimes put all the jobs experience if you are kind of specializing in one thing, don't put everything. It doesn't matter. Like if you work, for example, I don't know, in a McDonald's five years ago, and then you want to add a job experience. If you have had some relevant, relevant uh, job experience, how that is heavy in your profile, you know? You don't have to see this like a resume. People see it like a resume, but it's not. It's basically, a summary of you as a professional that is no to hire you is to see if you have in common something with a partner, you have in common something with a client, um, you know, somebody that, that actually uh, wants to connect with you to do something meaningful between the two of you. Uh, volunteer experience is good, uh, but it's not like at the end uh, of, the, of the world, you know, uh, like people are not like, oh, look, she's uh, volunteering for different causes. Like, I don't update this that much. I have too many volunteer experience over the time. Uh, but yeah, it's for, for some time was relevant, it's not uh, anymore. Uh, of course, uh, goes into the publications I've done in the past years, uh, you know, um, go scroll, scroll, scroll. And then I don't think that even shows my education, for example. For a certain careers, education is important. For Canadian customers, education is not important. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, more the experience that you have in sec se a certain sector. Uh, so at least you are like a doctor or something like you really need to demonstrate the experience. Then, uh, you know, you will, you will be like, um, you know, required to see like what is your level of um, you know, diploma. And um, I, comparing again with Latin America, people tend to focus too much in education. Sometimes they are coming and saying, oh, I come from this or X university that I know is pretty famous in their countries, but in here, nobody knows them. So, you know, putting an emphasis in your education is not going to help you. Now, putting an emphasis in to get uh, references and get, uh, you know, um, more information about uh, yourself, uh, you know, and about, you know, your career path, then that makes a difference. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to uh, share the other, um, you know, desktop, uh, my, my presentation in here, because, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, I wanted to mention all these tips for LinkedIn because it's the main connector uh, for business developer people, the business development people. And it matters, uh, you know, your connection matters. Uh, so don't connect with people because you want to be friends. <laughs> that's, the, that's the other misconception that people have. Uh, like, uh, I want to be friends of this person. Uh, that's not how it works. Uh, you know, you really want to do something uh, in a work level or maybe partnership level. And then, uh, you know, you have uh, Twitter also, which is not well used in, again in countries in Latin America. That, that will be the other thing that, that you need to uh, learn how to use and use it more often. Uh, so our Twitter account, especially, account for, especially for uh, the Latin startups, is pretty much active, uh, same as other Canadian companies do. And um, uh, what you should add into it in LinkedIn, uh, for example, you, you could see I was scrolling down and down on that. What do you think the other people do? Like when they look at a profile, they just look at the really uh, top uh, part of your profile. They are not looking at every single, uh, you know, think about your life. Um, at, la at least it has something relevant uh, for uh, that, that they can find, you know, in common with what they are doing. But people really look at the first paragraph and your description and your photo and that's it. So that, that's important. Um, I already talked about experience and education, so I will uh, you know, continue with the next slide. Now, in business strategy, uh, you need to actually educate yourself. Uh, here it comes 
some of the comments I've done in other modules uh, that you need to make sure if you are putting yourself as a specialist of business development in certain area, you need to really know about the sector, about you know customers in that area, about your company, uh, the, the company you are working with. Uh, listen, 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 listen. Uh, if you are going into conversations with people, please, uh, you know, just uh, shut up for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, at least, you know, uh, you are kind of having an interactive uh, conversation, but let them talk. Sometimes, you know, customers, especially when you are getting new customers for, um, you know, for certain type of companies, if they are pretty dissatisfied with the competitor, they will talk a lot about what are the mistakes the competitors have done and how they feel uh, satisfied with the service and how they feel like uh, it should be improved. And all those tips are going to help you to help your company to do better in business development and acquire more customers, especially if you are connecting with different type of customers then, um, you know, they don't have to buy right away if you are kind of like having a conversation with them. If you see often that they are coming into this common, uh, you know, uh, brands about, you know, certain type of competitors, certain type of service, then you, you can see, hey, we have a chance here to grow actually in this particular area. So just listen. Uh, explore partnerships and I will apologize here because I'm going to say that sometimes people uh, I, I saw uh, one video from Gika Wasaki uh, from uh, years ago and he said partnerships are bullshit many times that's the case uh, so why is that you know people perceive that partnerships cannot be uh, really meaningful for uh, companies uh, it's because there are common mistakes that are happening when you are opening that opportunity if you are partnering with a company that is broken as yours, then basically it's not going to go uh, too, uh, too far. Uh, you know, everyone, especially I think companies that they have been struggling financially and because of that, you know, they make a lot of mistakes uh, over trying to do a uh, partnership uh, work uh, with other uh, companies in, that can be complementary. But if the other company is in the same situation, you know, there is a desperation in, in, in between that can make that partnership not work that well. Also, uh, you know, people usually in business development over promised. Uh, this is a common mistake. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, in that place many years ago. I learned in Canada to don't over promise uh, something that I cannot really commit with. And uh, that's important for people to understand. You are, uh, you are committed with something and you are committing to a partnership and you are promising somebody this is going to happen, then you gotta, if you are not getting to that goal that you promised, then you can get really close. You can, you can be close enough to tell them, hey, I, I made my best effort. This is what we got. You know, we are, uh, we are improving for the next time, but you know, get close for what you ever promised uh, to other people. And then, uh, you know, uh, th there is a lot of PS happening in the market. <laughs> people are like, saying I can do this, I can do that, kind of goes into the over-promising part. Uh, but uh, just uh, be careful with the words that you are using, be careful with uh, you know, what uh, the others are expecting from you. That's, that's important uh, for you to know what they are expecting and uh, what you have said uh, and you know, things like that. Uh, other common mistakes is that you're promising the same as other people have promised in the past and then, you know, this new partner has had already a bad experience with a semi similar promise. So you have to let them talk and know that while this partnership with another person or another company that was similar to yours didn't work, what was the part that didn't work and how you can do it different and how they will trust you? Because uh, getting trust again in a similar topic is sometimes extremely difficult. And uh, connect, uh, connect meaningfully with uh, people that, that are, you know, uh, giving you the time to talk with you. So no, not just that, uh, you know, don't, don't do it just because of the sale. Uh, of course, at the end, it's your goal. You want to get the sale at the end, but uh, you need to know, you know, what is the real uh, value that you are proposing to this other person. And if it's the opposite, also hear the other part and make sure that you are getting what is the real value that they are proposing. Uh, okay, so 
in introductions, uh, because this is very common that what we do in, in LinkedIn, usually it's a good practice to send a note uh, when you are connecting. Just don't, don't send the connection in LinkedIn just because. Uh, send that with a note and telling the person why is that you want to connect with that person. You don't have to elaborate too much, but you have to give some kind of reason, uh, you know, that maybe is a common point or common place for both of you to be connected and that will encourage the, per the person to actually accept your connection, especially if you don't have experience or you don't have you know, that many connectors in your LinkedIn account. Now, uh, research the person that you are connecting because uh, in that way, you know, sometimes people are putting relevant information in there. Sometimes they are putting ways that they are passionate about, uh, in particular about certain sectors, uh, certain volunteer positions, uh, certain things, uh, you know, sometimes even sports, they, could, they put, you know, very personal stuff on that. Uh, and then you can maybe resonate with uh, things that they are putting on that and, and, and then uh, the note will be more personal. Um, if you are offering a call, if you are asking for a call, uh, then try not to take more than 15 minutes. Let them know that, you know, it's not realistic when people send me a note and they say, oh, I, it, it, it will take five to 10 minutes of your time. It never does. <laughs> never does. Minimum, it takes 30 minutes. And I have had 15 minutes call, that's kind of realistic. Uh, and I have also the opposite and this more common that people are asking for 30 minutes to one hour sometimes. That's bad practices. People don't have that time, especially under COVID-19. For example, um, there are people that have too many calls in the day. They don't want to have another call, another 30 or one hour call. That's just insane uh, sometimes. Uh, in our case, for example, in my personal case, I get sometimes in the day 11 calls or 12 calls a day. So believe me, at the end of the day, I don't want to talk with any more, any more people. So um, just make sure that if you are proposing something is that, especially if you are introducing yourself for the first time, is just, uh, you know, to make sure that it's going to be a value from that call. Um, go with a specific goal because, you know, sometimes, People sent a note saying, I want to uh, get in a call with you. I want to know about you. I'm sorry, but I'm not here to spend, uh, you know, 15 to 30 minutes of my time uh, for you to know me better. Or sometimes people are uh, saying, I, I would like to know more about your organization, about your programs. Man, all the information is in the website. Just go there and read it. That's why we put it there. This is not like a vain mean with the person, it's just trying to be mindful about timing and about uh, you know, how I can manage uh, you know, expectations from people when we go to the call. Many times I have gone to calls that uh, people just come and say, oh, I thought we will have in common this and that with your organization, but it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. So if they put the information before, I can tell them from before, you know, uh, maybe we are not that aligned that you think we are. And many times that had happened and I have people that they actually thank me for telling them, you know, that, that the conversation is not going to go anywhere. And it happened the opposite too. Like sometimes I send a note to somebody and people have told me, you know what, we don't do this. Uh, like what you are proposing is no part of our goals or anything that we are doing at this point. So, uh, you know, the common sense in business development is that you are going to get a lot of no's in the market. People that will say, sorry, but, uh, you know, there is nothing in common in here. Uh, so if you are kind of following up with one person and you see that the person saw, you know, your note, sometimes the person can be really like busy and they may not be available to answer right away. So give some time for the person to answer. And then, you know, don't overpass three messages. If you are like a bordering every week about having a call, this person is not going to respond and that's your no, you know? So, so just maybe try again in a year or six months, but uh, don't, uh, you know, bombard the, the person with too many messages. Uh, like if the person is not responding, I'm sure it's for a reason. Uh, maybe they are not interested in what you are offering or maybe they are too busy uh, with the things that they are doing at that point. Uh, so, and they, this is not timing for them. And you have to understand that and 
continue with the next lead. Uh, so that that's how it works. Um, uh, so don't don't put things personal and business in the same place. Uh, you know, especially in Latin America, we tend to uh, take many things personal, and also, uh, you know, some people can, uh, for example, just try to connect uh, in Facebook with a client. That's inappropriate here. Like at least you have uh, this amazing uh, relationship with a client that wants to connect with you on Facebook, but do you really want them to see you at the beach or doing your own personal stuff? Um, you know, like that's, you know, crossing that line can be a little bit difficult, especially in Canada, people can be very clicky. Like they don't, uh, they don't necessarily involve uh, with you at a personal level. They normally do, uh, you know, uh, more business level. They are not interested sometimes in your personal life or what you are going through or, you know, things like that. Uh, sometimes they ask you to be polite, but they are not meaning to hear you, uh, you know, about your life. That's the, many times how, how it is. Um, so sales strategy comes with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of components that you will have to look at uh, very carefully. You will have to look at the social media uh, marketing strategy. So knowing the networks is very important. Uh, for example, we know that Brazilians love uh, Instagram. So we try to do more in Instagram for Brazilian customers. Uh, you know, but we know Canadians, they don't, they, they use Instagram, but for, for business, they may use more LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, you know, knowing your audience, knowing where to put the content is important. Again, building events uh, as the beginning of the module in module one, we talk about building community. This is very important for people, uh, you know, to get involved with you, to know you better, uh, know the company you are working with. Um, this, this is, uh, you know, important. It's not the matter that you are going to do one event. You, you need to do a lot of events. At the beginning, you don't get that many people. Uh, with the time, you will get more and more people involved with you. Also, uh, you know, provide good content. Uh, make sure that the content that you are sharing is relevant. Uh, this is probably basic, but uh, please don't uh, share your personal vision about politics or religion and things that are happening especially if you are in like a professional network when uh, customers are looking at you. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, keep neutral as much as you can, maybe in your personal uh, accounts uh, that are not related with LinkedIn, uh, you can share something different, uh, but I will be very careful in what type of content you are sharing. Um, create newsletters, getting involved with the people, uh, you know, by uh, sending news every month. Uh, don't send it every week. We made that mistake at the beginning and it was pretty annoying for people. Uh, also, a depend of the industry. Sometimes, you know, people in the clothing industry, people in certain sectors, they actually uh, get, uh, you know, to send more newsletters than other companies in the market. Uh, <clears throat> validate price, you know, talking with different people. Just don't talk about, you know, um, just the mistakes about the competitors and things like that. Just talk, this price makes sense for you? Will you buy this or that into this price? Um, what it will be uh, a price that you think is fair in the industry? Uh, you know, what, what, will you, what will be attractive for you? Like uh, listening again in this part is very important. And of course, project sales and be realistic with those goals. If you are thinking into, you're going to get 10 customers by August, how is that you are going to do that? How many people do you need to meet the, uh, to get to the 10 people because you need to meet a lot of people a lot of people will say no and then a small portion of them will say yes and you will get to those customers um, so getting those numbers those projections are important for the company um, so actually required for uh, business development is that uh, i hope that you guys can have 25 new connections in linkedin again more like a, a personal, a professional level, uh, either because you're working with a company or you're hoping to work with a company or you're hoping to work with a sector. Just look at who are in LinkedIn that uh, means, uh, you know, uh, a good connection for you. Uh, maybe if you're working already with a company, uh, maybe put together a partnership proposal for the company. Tell them, hey, I, I analyze the market. I, I can see that this other company may be very complementary. 
and maybe we want to pursue a connection, a partnership with them. And then uh, sales projections uh, for the proposal of the company. Uh, you know, so so basically what I was saying in the other slide, just go, uh, you know, make sure that uh, you have your um, uh, you have the sales projections uh, more like a realistic and making sure how many people do I have to meet, uh, how many people probably will buy, uh, you know, if you have history from the company on how many people buy in the past uh, in this region, for example, then uh, you can get more, more accurate uh, with those numbers. So the deadline uh, for this is September 17. And then after this, you are going to go into the module about your career path. And then, uh, you know, we are basically uh, expecting that you are going to present uh, something about your company. What was the, uh, you know, the things that you have done for them? Uh, you know, I, I we love to hear you in an interactive session, live session uh, with you guys, uh, listening about what what particular uh, part was this, you were struggling, uh, connecting with these companies and what particular parts were really meaningful for you and actually make a difference for your career. And of course, uh, you know, uh, if you are working with a company from our side, we will ask that company to provide a reference. Uh, if it's that they are not hiring you or something like that, but at least provide a reference uh, so you can actually, uh, you know, start looking for opportunities in the market. Um, in the past, and we have volunteers that they have got jobs before the three months finish. Uh, so that also happens and that's also good. Uh, you know, we, we want to hear those, those stories. We want to hear how uh, people can make a difference, uh, you know, with this program uh, for their own career opportunities. So uh, for that, that's it about business development in North America. I hope that you enjoyed this session and I hope to see you uh, in a couple of weeks uh, just to hear the results uh, of the uh, training sessions and, and then hear your feedback as well. Thank you for your attention.